What's good? It's your boy Mixtape Moff, and today I'm going to hit y'all with a review of the new Mozzie album entitled Occupational Hazard. Let's get to it. Mozzie is a prolific Sacramento-based rapper with his gravelly voice and matter-of-a-fact flow. You can always count on him to paint authentic portraits of street life. Mozzie has not taken his foot off the gas since dropping his Beyond Bulletproof album in May of this year, but he's back with a full-length project entitled Occupational Hazard. And from the cover art, one could conclude that Mozzie views himself as almost being caught in a crossfire. He faces potential problems from the police who represent a threat as their gun is drawn uh, but also Mozzie is aware of the consequences that come from his former lifestyle of being in the streets hence the album's title occupational hazard whereby in this context suggests that when you choose a way of life you have to be willing to accept the consequences or the occupational hazards that come with that life and I think that is what Mozzie is trying to get across on this project, even though it's not really a conceptual album. This album, Occupational Hazard, sounds almost as good sonically as Beyond Bulletproof, but it comes up a little short in terms of matching the quality of that release or exceeding it. But it makes sense considering that Mozzie stated that this album is more of a mixtape and that he has a new album album on the way. A lot of similar themes that were covered on Beyond Bulletproof, like Betrayal, addiction, death, and just life in the trenches is also touched upon a great deal here. I think this album feels like a continuation of Beyond Bulletproof, almost as if it could have originally been designed for a deluxe edition, but then later turned into a separate album. But this is just my take. I could be totally wrong on this. As far as the production is concerned, there are no big name producers attached to this, which is pretty much the norm for Mozzie albums as he likes to stay within the realm of the Bay Area producers who he has worked with for years. But I think most of the beats are effective enough and work for what Mozzie was trying to accomplish, but there wasn't much of variety to them at times. For instance, the beats tended to either sound very mid-tempo with suspenseful keys and that Bay Area bass, or else you had ones that were very laid back with gentle pianos and faint guitars. With respect to the lyrics, Mozzie is forever painting these descriptive street vignettes. He doesn't sugarcoat the street lifestyle or glamorize it in any way. Often his lyrics depict someone who seems trapped between two worlds, the streets and the legal life of being a rapper. Uh, but his flow is very crisp and the rhyme schemes are intricate and of course the heavy slang is present throughout. So with that being said, let me hit y'all with this track by track breakdown. The intro finds Mozzie rapping passionately over a gentle piano passage. The, the lyrics are pretty reflective as he's recording calling back to when certain events transpired. It's a very short intro, but it manages to give off that contemplative and kind of introspective energy. This is something that Mozzie is very skilled at doing. On Death is Calling, Mozzie explores themes of loss, betrayal, dude switching sides, and just heavy street content in general. The beat is very Bay Area inspired with pianos, synths and bass rumblings. It sounds like a pretty standard instrumental for Mozzie to rhyme over, but I thought this one was solid. This mob music style of production continues on the following record, Live Through Me. The beat is slightly eerier though. Mozzie talks his plans of giving his dead homie's son a Mozzie chain when he gets older. He also states, my heart's invested. I might cry a little bit, but it's the game. I just, and I just pray that I don't pay for all that I did. The following song, Terrorist Threats, is the first song that really Really stands out to me in terms of having that hard hitting energy. This one is a banger. The piano sample is really prominent with almost a classical component to it. Mozzie sounds super menacing on top of this chilling beat. He's just in full lyrical spaz mode. So I would say the first four songs are really solid. I have no complaints about the way Mozzie decided to set this project off. What follows is the wife and Lucci assisted get even. The tempo slows down a little here as the instrumental is more mellow and fitting for a song that would feature wife and Lucci. There is somewhat of a Dirty South vibe present as well. Like what I've noticed is that songs that feature YFN Lucci tend to have this 
similar style of production. It's almost like with Travis Scott, the artists who feature Travis Scott and YFN Lucci tend to always tailor their production to fit both of them. It seems to never fail. This one was cool, but I feel like I've heard several songs within the past year featuring YFN Lucci that sounded exactly the same. On Same 40, Mozzie returns with a darker and grittier sound. He talks being loyal to the code, gang life, and just keeping that thing on him. It's another simple yet very solid moment on the album in which Mozzie is dropping some streetwise game. I like the synthesizer as it gives it that West Coast gangster flavor. Up next, we have the poignant Heartbroken featuring Quando Rondo. On top of some mellow and somber pianos, Mozzie talks losing close friends to gun violence and some retaliation that took place. I didn't think Quando Rondo did a bad job here. He's not a feature that I would typically get too excited about, but his hook managed to fit with the direction of this song. After that, we get the single Never Lackin', which contains some atmospheric production. It's another laid back yet piano driven beat that Mozzie uses to reflect on all the pain and struggle. I'm um, getting some Tupac vibes from this one. Mozzie also reminds us that he's a gangster first and then a rapper. And at the end of his second verse, he leaves us with the jewel and you get shot for anything if you don't shoot for something. The mellow piano production continues on the following song, Don't Play Fair. I could have used a different hook, to be honest. Wally had a verse which was okay, but I was kind of lukewarm about this song altogether. It really didn't stick out to me, although I liked how Mozzie advises the young dudes to stay off the net if you stay with your mama, and we all know what he was getting at there. I like that he transitioned back to some grimier material on the song Hazardous. This one is a haunting slapper. While he states, lost my young and as a youth, I couldn't sleep the same. I really dig the hook, especially due to Mozzie's distinct vocabulary. The word choices that he uses makes his rhymes more interesting than most rappers. I think Hazardous was definitely one of the harder hitting cuts for me. The following track, Streets Ain't Safe, is easily my least favorite song on the tape. Uh, not only does the beat sound like a wannabe Juice World and Polo G instrumental, but the auto-tuning chorus is as generic as they come. Sure, I suppose Mozzie sounded all right rapping on top of this guitar beat, but it just wasn't something that I wanted to hear from him. There is one more auto-tune hook, and it's on the next song for different skits. Although, I didn't mind this one because the hook didn't sound ultra sugary like on the previous song. This gentle piano beat does sound similar to a couple of the other instrumentals on this tape, but it's a cool song. Not a favorite, but I wouldn't say I dislike it. He is speaking some real shit on here nonetheless. The last two songs have some really smooth and luxurious West Coast style production. The songs Too Much Pride and Live In What I Know. In fact, they are easily my two favorite mellow songs from the tape. Too Much Pride features Selly Rue, E. Mozzie, and also Trey The Truth, who Mozzie has worked with before. They have a collaboration album together. I thought it was cool that Trey gave Griselda a shout out with his Benny the Butcher reference. I like the chill melody and vocal sample throughout as well. Then on the closing song, Living What I Know, Mozzie teams up with Sue Surf and Stacey Barth. Uh, this is another smooth instrumental that is perfect riding music. I could definitely have seen Nipsey Hussle rapping over this. Uh, the fact that he has Stacey Barth as a feature also gave me some Nipsey vibes considering that she was a guest feature on his Victory Lap album. I thought the last two records closed out this project on a really strong note. Overall, I give this album a rating of 3.5 out of 5. Even though I enjoyed the majority of this tape, I thought some of the beats and some of the themes got a little repetitive towards the second leg of the album. I also wasn't a fan of some of the auto-tune hooks. Sure, a couple of them sounded decent enough, but I didn't think he needed to include four. I mean, I could see two. Uh, at the end of the day, this just feels like Mozzie was slightly pandering to a younger crowd, almost a equivalent to what Jadakiss and The Locks tend to do on their albums, unfortunately. When I did say the beat sounded similar, if you are from the Bay Area, this is not a diss to your sound, as I actually appreciate the uniqueness of the Bay Area sound in hip-hop. Uh, but I would also like to see Mozzie work with some producers outside the typical group that he uses. 
Maybe some of the following would be a great start, like The Alchemist, DJ Muggs, Hit Boy, Cardo, I don't know, just to add some variety. But I understand this was to be viewed more as a mixtape rather than an actual album. Still, I think this was a strong effort that some hardcore fans might consider to be their album of the year. While I liked it, I wouldn't go that far as Beyond Bulletproof is superior to this mixtape in my opinion. Uh, but I will say that I feel with each release, Mozzie is making more cohesive and consistent projects. And I'm definitely looking forward to to see what Hell Gang Mozzie has cooking up for the next album. My favorite tracks include Living Through Me, Terrorist Threats, Same 40, Never Lacking, Too Much Pride, and Living What I Know. Let me know what you thought of this project in the comment section below. What should I check out next? It's your boy, Mixtape Moth. I'm signing out, but be sure to hit that like button and please subscribe. As always, it's peace and blessings. Mozzie, Occupational Hazard, one.